Good evening everybody again. Uh, in uh, in Tagalog is uh, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Uh, in Ilocano is uh, from uh, north part is Nebang Ngarabiyo Amin, Kakapsat. In Paodo uh, ng Pangasinan is uh, Maligulas uh, Labi Labi si Kaya Amin. In South, uh, mahalang gabi sa inyong tanan, mga kaotoran. Uh, now in Bicol, anybody who is a Bicolana here? Maray na bang gisa in Dugabos? That's it. And now uh, we have the uh, opening remarks by uh, Tony McGrady on a round of advice, please. Thank you. Association and distinguished guests, one and all. Next year, our city celebrates its 100th birthday. There are many cities around the world, Manila, London, Rome, to obviously be in existence for many, many, many more times than Mount Isa. But there's something very, very special about this city. In our hundred short years, we've established ourselves right around the world. And when I was in state politics, wherever I went around the world, people knew where Mount Isa was, they knew what Mount Isa produced, and the importance of Mount Isa to the economy of Australia. And one of the main reasons that Mount Isa has contributed so much is because of the influx of people from other parts of the world. And it's only a very short space of time that we've had this major influx of people from the Philippines. And people ask me, what's so special about Mount Isa where people can come from many different lands and all of a sudden really believe that they are part of our community? And the point I keep on making every time I'm given the opportunity to come along and address a Filipino meeting is that each and every one of you still retain the love and affection which you have for your homeland, as you should, and never, ever, ever give that away. Because when you become an Australian, you don't have to renounce your background or your homeland, and you can still be a loyal and faithful Filipino but at the same time, you've adopted a new country. And I see so many instances where people have made such a major contribution to our city from this organization. So tonight, I just want to say that in the years I've been involved in public life, the Filipino Association and the individuals in it have been proud of our community and they've made a major contribution to it. And as I said before, as I travel around the world, people know of the significant contributions the Filipinos make. In fact, I've been to Manila a number of times, I've had meetings with um, senior people from the Filipino government. I've even been inside, is it the Blue Palace? Well, where does Mark, President Marcos live? What's the, what's, the, what's the name of the palace? I, I've been inside there. So ladies and gentlemen, be proud, be proud of your heritage. Never ever forget where you come from, but at the same time, you are now living in Australia. Those of you who have been naturalized, you're entitled to vote at state, local, and federal elections. You are part of the Mount Isa and the Australian community. So it's important that we have occasions like this where you can meet and um, I mentioned that the mayor before, before we came here tonight, the mayor and their husband was at another um, function. Danielle, you tell us where it was. 
Samoa. So that, they're celebrating their anniversary. Now let me just say this, it doesn't really affect the Filipinos, but Father Mick and the Multicultural Festival, this year the theme is going to be New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. And we've invited the Prime Minister of New Zealand to come and do the formal opening. Now, we, we, haven't, we haven't had an acceptance yet, but we haven't had a rejection. So we've invited her, and I would expect all the Filipinos to come along and pretend you're South Sea Islanders. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for the invitation to come here tonight and be, once again be part of the Filipino community. I do, Sam and I have got a special affection for you, and I'll close with a story which I've told you so many times before. And that is, we were having a very special Filipino evening, and I was determined that I would do that dickling dance. Nickling dance, And I, I had, every night, I had four Filipino ladies who would come round to my house, and they taught Sandra and I how to do it. And you had a president here many years ago called Mrs. Morris. And she left here and she went to live on the coast. And when I arrived, I was Minister for Mines and Energy, I think, at the time. And when I went there, there was a Filipino social evening at the local theatre. And of course, Mrs. Morris ensured that I would go along to it. So they had the Filipinos doing the dance with the sticks. And uh, Mrs. Morris said, is there anybody in the audience who would please try to do this dance? And not the old more terrified, no, no. So she said, Minister, would you please? I said, I couldn't do that dance. Please try, please try. And I'll try. So the music started, the stick started, and I jumped in and I could do I could do the dance as good as any Filipino. And at that time, the big movie around Australia was ballroom, it, it, it's um, ballroom dancing, what was the name of it? But ballroom dancing. And the next day, in the local paper, there's a photograph of me doing the dance, and the big title, the big headline was, It Ain't Ballroom Dancing. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the night, and um, we'll catch up with you as I, Sam and I walk around. And a big thank you for our mayor. This is about the fourth function she's been to tonight. She's got three more to go to, but she made it clear to me she was not going to miss this one tonight. Let's put our hands together for the mayor. Tony. Tony is a BFF of the Filipino Association. I'm sure you know that. <laughs>